how to set up a Gigaset voice over IP base station from the professional range so that you then can connect your DEC handsets to this system. And I have the N510 IP Pro uh, from the professional Gigaset range and you can see it's uh, made in Germany. So if you're located uh, outside of Europe, um, that might be a little bit of a specialty product. And uh, if you're curious, you can watch this tutorial, but since it is a little bit of a unique product, um, maybe uh, if you cannot get this in the, in the United States or if that's not applicable for you, uh, maybe just head over to my channel page, look in the voiceover IP section. In there you will find, I can show this to you here, also uh, corresponding reviews for, uh, let's say a Yaling product that's kind of like somewhat similar to this, but should probably work better in an international setting. So as you can see the navigation below, this is the introductory part. Uh, in part two, I'm going to do an unboxing of this voice over IP uh, base station for your headsets or handsets, uh, so to speak. And then I'm do uh, in part three, I'm doing the configuration and in part four, I'm doing the summary. So let's get rolling with the Gigaset N510 IP Pro unboxing configuration and review. Let's get started. Uh, so guys, then let's have a look what we can find inside the package of this voiceover IP base station. Um, I'm just gonna open this for you up right here and then let's see what we find. Um, first we have a manual and I think this says International uh, European Union, something like this. We have a power adapter, we have the base station. And we have a white network cable, uh, which seems to be a very basic standard category five. I'm not sure. I mean, I would have thought they use at least category five E, um, but yeah, well, I guess uh, there's not that much data going through it. And you see, you just connect the power. Um, I think it also supports power over ethernet. Uh, people have mentioned that which obviously is useful if you have a power over ethernet switch, then you can uh, power this directly over the ethernet cable and then position this, uh, wall mount this, as, let's say you're in an office, you can uh, wall mount this at a really uh, center, a prominent location where you have a good uh, reception uh, throughout the business or uh, let's say even if you use it at home uh, with the power over ethernet, you're a little bit more flexible positioning it then with the power adapter, let's have a quick look at the menu. Uh, okay guys, I, I will have to, because the information is so sparse, uh, I mean, it's it's a pro product, so I think they uh, assume um, you know uh, what you're doing, um, so they don't give you any information whatsoever, um, which is kind of funny. Um, I mean, why wouldn't you give information? Um, maybe I'm gonna have to check the website to see whether I can get more information because Ah, no, it says it on the bottom. On the bottom it says, so it says PoE and then the specification. So I think I should be good if I want to use this with power over ethernet um, because it needs the specification. Awesome. So since there isn't much else I can uh, show you, it's a very plain basic business type packaging. Um, we're just gonna connect this, boot it up and then uh, look at the configuration at the web menu. Um, that's probably uh, the most uh, interesting. So you see, it's a, it's a quite compact and wall mountable. Power over Ethernet, uh, power supply, network cable is included. Uh, manual is very sparse. But uh, hey, uh, if it works well, it works well. So uh, let's uh, configure it and then test the quality, the sound quality. So welcome to part three, um, where I'm gonna show you how to configure the base station with the phone. And obviously you could, uh, you could uh, configure the voice over IP lines with the phone itself. It offers that to you here in the menu, but I advise against it. Uh, instead, we're gonna configure the base station via the web interface. I think if you are into voice over IP, you already know that that's the better solution. And the important part uh, that I'm going to show you right now basically is that when you go into the menu, uh, you go to this uh, settings uh, part here. And then I think you have to go down to system. And when you click on system, you scroll down even further to local network. 
And when you push that, it will say to you that the base station gets the IP, IP address dynamically from the router and it says to you the IP address. And that's something you wanna use and type in your web browser. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And then we're gonna configure the phone lines for the base station. Uh, so let's get started and configure the phone lines so that we can use the phone. Because as you can see here right now, I mean, it asks you to start the voice over IP assistant, but I do not want to do this with the phone because it's a little bit cumbersome to type everything in here. So let's do this with the computer instead. That should be much, much easier. So guys, uh, as it turns out, it was not as easy as I had hoped. I Yesterday, I tried to configure this for several hours and while I could set it up relatively easy, I could call out um, when I tried to call back to the voice over IP from my uh, cell phone line, um, it didn't work. So that was kind of frustrating. And before we continue any further, because uh, the Gigaset N510 IP doesn't come with the manual, um, I suggest you head over to teamwork.gigaset.com and then click on the N510 IP um, because here you f uh, will find the complete uh, manual with all the details. So in case I don't answer a question right now in this tutorial, you can always refer to the full manual. Um, that helped me a little bit. I read in there yesterday. So what we're gonna do right now, like I told you, we're gonna log into the uh, base station by typing the IP address, which you can always uh, uh, find out by going into the menu of your phone. It displays the IP address. Like I showed you, um, you can select various languages. The standard system pin is four times to zero. One, two, three, four. And obviously you should modify that as well for safety purposes. And after I quickly hit OK, I can, I'm can i locked into the, uh, into the base station and I can change all the settings. So the first thing I did and the first thing I recommend you do is you go to, you head over to settings and then to management. And in management, um, not only can you see, oh, you can set the time server if it's not already the correct time server. Um, you go to firmware update and that seems to be a really, really useful function. You can just automatically check for a firmware update. That's what I did. I hit firmware update. Um, it went to Gigaset servers and uh, found a new firmware update. It downloaded the firmware update and installed this firmware update. And when it does do the firmware update, the light, the blue light at the front will start to flash really, really fast. So don't interrupt it. Really take your time, wait a couple minutes, uh, wait until really it's finished. And then you have the newest version. And after I did that, I headed up here to the tel tel telephony section and I tried to configure my voice over IP phone, voice over IP phone lines. So my provider um, gives me a fast, really fast internet connection. And in that package are included three voice over IP phone lines. So I tried to set up with the assistant. I just went to edit, uh, wanted to enter the details. Um, here's the configuration assistant. I tried the configuration assistant and it sort of worked. So maybe what's most interesting for you, um, I click next and then it loads a country list. So there are quite a few countries and in that country, in my case, I'm in Germany, so I click next. Um, it had my provider here. Obviously, there are a lot of other provider presets. Um, I think the provider presets can really help you to configure this more easily. I went ahead and used that and uh, it kind of worked, but I only could call out uh, outside, but I couldn't receive uh, calls from my cell phone, which was kind of frustrating. Um, what I'm just going to do is I'm going to give you an example of how I entered this information here. And from that, you can uh, see one example how I configured this. So basically, I just did four entries um, and let's pull this a little bit to the side, open this up here. And then you can see for authentication name, I just used this, uh, the password. I don't have to put in the password. 
and then I, uh, for username and display name, I just use the area code plus the number. So 030 would be Berlin. And then one, two, I just took something random. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, more interestingly, what I found is the details. So you go to the advanced settings. In my case, I use this profile. So it entered the server kind of automatically uh, as well as the stunt server. And then the interesting thing is that while I have entered this information in a kind of uh, similar way into my yearling before, so I'm kind of like experienced, the yearling is also a business product. I'm kind of experienced a little bit of how to enter the data. So I was really frustrated when uh, it uh, N510 would still not work correctly. And I was really like, why, why, why? I have done this before, I have done this before, why can't I receive those calls? And I did some digging and interestingly, what I found is that I had to actually log into my router, go to the advanced settings, <laughs> sorry guys, this is uh, all in German, and then to application layer gateway. And there is a SIP ALG function that usually, uh, when I use voice over IP phones, uh, the SIP ALG is always turned on. The SIP ALG can modify uh some of the packages apparently when you're behind a network address i think you call it trends uh, how do you call it invert i mean network address transversal or something i mean if you're a network guy you know what i mean um basically the sip alg was always turned on but uh it didn't work so um what i finally settled on was a very strange thing um i have the same provider uh, I have the same router, but two different devices, they need different settings. For some reason, the Yealink was fine with using no stun server, no outbound proxy and having the SIP ALG on. Um, I tested it, I called in and the Yealink would work just right away. And I did not know what to do because I just assumed I take the same settings because that works and apply the same settings to the Gigaset. No way. It didn't work. I had to enable the stun server and I had to explicitly turn off SIP ALG for it to work. So um, I think there's this, uh, if you're like a really uh, voice over IP expert, please explain to me, why is that? Why is that? Do the uh, manufacturers of voice over IP phones um, for some reason implement this, pro implement things so differently that you suddenly have to switch the settings? I mean, you can assume if it's a normal consumer, um, a normal consumer will be totally overwhelmed. Even I had challenges with it. But this is a really important information. Uh, if you having trouble with your Gigaset device, try to turn off SIP ALG in your router. Um, from what I've read, some routers don't let you turn it off. Some routers may not have it. Uh, so it really depends on your specific device. But that's a key. If you have never heard that, um, that should stick with you. So, guys, before I digress any further, this is the example of how to configure this uh, base station. Now it works really, really fine. I tested it. And uh, yeah, maybe sc I'm scrolling down so you can look at the settings one last time. Um, maybe what I'm going to do is because my previous videos were mostly focused on Sonitel, uh, maybe I'm going to do a separate video that shows you how to use the Gigaset, how I can use, how I use the Gigaset with my Sonitel account, because this is what I'm going to do next. And I remember uh, that Sonitel had uh, in the help section uh, also an help article for, believe it or not, uh, I think a Gigaset phones. So let's check this real quick. Yeah, that says Siemens Gigaset. So um, I think that's going to be challenge, uh, interesting um to try for you guys uh, because if you're buying a voice over ip system like this overseas um maybe to see a different configuration example uh, for this device uh, and sonitel but since the video has become quite long um, i'm sticking with this one line configuration so why don't we just jump to again out of the computer and i'm going to show you some of the ringtones that are on here and also test the headset connector and summarize and conclude this uh, product review and tutorial. 
Now we have jumped to the summary and conclusion part of the Gigaset N510 IP Pro base station. And my personal conclusion is, um, for the average consumer, this is definitely a little bit tricky to configure. Uh, um, what I basically did, I introduced the, my little project to you. I did the unboxing, I showed you what's inside the box, that you can power it over power over ethernet in case you have a power, power over ethernet switch. Uh, I showed you if you don't have a power over ethernet switch, uh, there's still a power adapter included. You get the category 5E uh, e network cable. And then in part three, I walked you through the ins and outs of the configuration um, that you should do the firmware update first. And I showed you how to look up the IP address of the base station directly in your handset, which is kind of neat because uh, the base station is more uh, uh, easily configured via the web interface. And uh, yeah, I mean, the surprising thing really to me was that when I configured this with my uh, German voice over IP provider that I could essentially insert, uh, uh, input the data for the configuration data for the voice over IP the same way like I did in a Yealink. It was kind of the same configuration, but it still didn't work until I switched off SIP LG in the router. That's something I didn't expect the Yealink. Really didn't need that, uh, but I showed you the this uh, overview chart uh, in the configuration part where I uh, displayed side by side the different configuration examples. And uh, yeah, if you, if you, in case you're in Germany for some reason, then you already saw the install example. Um, the best thing is uh, if something doesn't work, you check back with your voice over IP provider because the voice over IP providers usually give you examples of how to input the data correctly. And uh, they usually have some help and tutorial sections. So it's, um, like I said, I have a lot of more other uh, voice of IP videos on my channel. And next up in part two, we're going to take a detailed look at this very nice SL750H Pro handset. Um, I show you all the details about this and the ringtones and everything and do like this uh, headset test. And this concludes the review and configuration tutorial of the Gigaset N510 IP Pro base station. Um, I'm convinced uh, you got something useful out of this uh, and that's why uh, I see you in the next video and as a subscriber on my channel. All the best to you guys uh, uh, with your voice of IP uh, endeavors. Uh, I see you in the next video. All the best to you. Take care. And because you watched my product review slash tutorial of the Gigaset IP Pro base station, you might also be interested in a second video that I created for you for the uh, corresponding handset. And guys, I'm really excited that more and more people have already subscribed to my channel and you can subscribe right now as well. Uh, I see you as in, in the next video as a subscriber and maybe even in one of my amazing online courses. All the best to you. Take care.